In 2023, another high-scoring American action series hit strongly. Starring Anthony Mackie. Known as the drama series version of Mad Max. Every frame is quite bursting. Twenty years later, the world is in a state of apocalypse. The whole world has become a large garbage dump. The city has also built towering walls. While the periphery of the city is full of violence and crime. The materials needed by people in the city need to be transported back and forth by a deliveryman. And John is such a character. Due to the shortage of materials outside the city. The criminals in exile are eyeing deliveryman like John. Chasing with heavy artillery fire is commonplace. Fortunately, John is not an ordinary person facing the crazy attack behind him. He turns on the music leisurely. Avoiding the shells coming by. And repelling the opponent. Also not forget to make off with a pair of shoes. Soon, John comes to the trading place. After successfully handing over the goods, the other party bring two boxes of unleaded gasoline as a reward. After all, in the apocalypse, resources are the most valuable things. Then, the other party places another order. Ask John to send a box of medicine to San Francisco. However, there is no safe road along the way. Halfway through, the parcel robber shows up. John quickly solves him, although the delivery job offers high pay. John's biggest dream has always been to have a happy family. Live a normal life as an ordinary person. And everything that was within reach. But it became an extravagant hope under the apocalypse. Soon, John comes to the gate of San Francisco. He gets a pistol after delivering the medicine. He is just about to leave when he is stopped by the guard at the door. Guard says that the mayor wants to talk to John. Soon, after John comes to the city to disinfect and spray perfume. He puts on the clothes provided by the other party. And then blindfolded. Before he reacts, he has come to the mayor whose name is Raven. She entertains John warmly and indicates that she wants John to pick up the parcel. It's in Chicago. Hearing this, John refuses mercilessly. You know, Chicago is a long way from here. There are many potential crises along the way. He can't afford to risk his life for just one parcel. Raven sees John refuse and makes her own terms directly. That is to let him live in San Francisco legally. Then she shows him around San Francisco. Looking at all familiar and unfamiliar scenes. John is thrilled. Then, Raven takes him back to her home. Meet her family and invite John to join for the dinner. Looking at such a warm scene, John's is deeply touched again. So he chooses to take the order. However, when he leaves, the Raven returns the baby with great disgust. And asks the man around to leave. It turns out that all this is false. John, who doesn't know anything about it, sets foot on the road with a look of expectation. Soon, he goes to his friend's house and asks for a map. His friend learns that he is going to cross America. On his way to Chicago, John is told to think twice. Because John has to go through Vegas. The strength of people in Vegas should not be underestimated. John, who is already fascinated by the so-called good life, doesn't care about these crises, he takes the map and starts directly. John just wants to get the parcel quickly successfully complete the task. However, when he is in a hurry to watch the map in his hand. Only to find a figure in front. John slams on the brake. And the figure disappears. He is going to take out the pistol. But the next second the cold muzzle is on his head. The woman does not speak but motions for John to get off. However, John takes out a dagger and points a gun at the woman. Just then, a man wearing a clown mask and laughing strangely rushes at them in his car. On the way to Chicago, he meets Quiet who is the car thief he encountered before. To make things worse he also meets a clown. Quiet wants to run away driving his car. Fortunately, John reacts fast and jumps into the car in time. The two sides confront each other on the road. Under the heavy fire, the clown tries his best to stop John's car. But the car doesn't work so John has to turn the car around. Prepare to stop the clown with the shells in front of him. Just when John thinks he has succeeded in solving him. A shell hits, the clown takes out heavy machine gun and constantly attacks them. It causes cause the car's tires to burst directly. In desperation, John has to drive into the building. On the other side, in this chaotic world. There is also a kind of butchers who live out there. In order to survive, they begin to hunt humans. And use it as food. These two guards are poor unlucky people. Just when they think they will be killed and made as dinner. The sheriff shows up with people and solves all the butchers present. Also gives them guns and lets them join him to maintain chaos in the United States of America.
Meanwhile, after John and Quiet drive into the building. They want to hide and fix the tires. But the clown is still chasing after. Rushes directly into the building and begins to look for the two. At the same time, Quiet deliberately throws a bottle in John's direction. Attract the clown to John. Sure enough, John is the first to be found. He tries to attack the clown with a wine bottle. However, the clown has a gun in his hand and he wants to fight the clown hand to hand. But the clown is tall and big. Finally, the clown pushes him on the screen of the game machine. Forcing him to watch tonight's performance. In order to survive, John has to come to his theater obediently. The clown begins to introduce him to all his friends. Including his friend with paper bag Hadro. John now thinks clowns is interesting. And also takes the initiative to introduce his friends in the car. Just then, the clown says. There is a woman who fell through his ventilation pipe. He intends to starve her to death. Which is regarded as a visual art enjoyment in his eyes. John turns to look over and finds that it is quiet. He doesn't want to save her. After all, it doesn't feel good to annoy the clown at all. But Quiet takes out his car key. To threaten John. In desperation, John asks the clown to let Quiet out to watch the performance. Due to lacking of audience. And John asks again. Whether he can leave after watching the performance. The clown says of course, but no one can live yet after watching three performances. After hear the clown's words. John has a bad feeling about it, soon the clown serves them a table of strange food. Then the clown begins to perform, his performance is not so much a performance. It's more like boring soliloquy. John and Quiet both doze off. Finally wait until the clown show is over. He suddenly jumps off the stage and asks them how the performing is. John says it is wonderful by against his will. However it annoys the clown. Then, he asks John again about his performance. At a critical moment, Quiet tells the truth. She says she has never watched such a bad performance. John has to follow. Saying he also agrees with Quiet's point of view. Who knows the clown not only doesn't get angry. But also he says he needs to tour. To the applause of John and Quiet. The clown lets them both get out of here alive. And he himself sets fire to this false stage. He plans to tour all over the world. Then John begins to negotiate with Quiet. He is eager to get the parcel now. At this time, John passes a checkpoint. This is the sheriff's territory and his men want John to show his pass. Just then, the man with long hair named Shepard reminds Quiet something. It turns out that the sheriff has caught her and her brother. Not only threatened her brother to commit suicide. But also left a deep mark on him. Quiet immediately gets off the car but is shot to the ground by another man's stun gun. John wants to get out of the car and explains but he is also stunned by the stun gun. There is not much time left for John now. After Quiet and John are knocked to the ground. In a trance, she regards John as his brother. Long hair Shepard asks Stu to search them. At this time, Shepard opens Quiet's clothes. And finds the unhealed mark on her shoulder. Soon they are taken to their place. Under the guards hostage, the two walk into the end of Red Line. At the same time, at the request of Shepard, Stu and Mike go to search John's car. Stu searches inside and finds a map to Chicago. And a photo of John's family. At this moment, Shepard comes up and asks Stu what is in his hand. Stu leaves the family photo to John. Just hands the map to Shepard. John and Quiet on the other side are locked in a room. He tries to bite off the bondage on his hand. After discovering that it doesn't help, he begins to talk with Quiet. Just then, the sheriff comes in. He recognizes Quiet at a glance, satirizes her and then goes straight to the topic. He says that as a sheriff, he sets up many checkpoints in the whole America. Why does the route on this map perfectly avoid all the checkpoints here? He asks John to name the cartographer of the map. It is impossible for John to give up his friend. He says that the map was picked up from the ground and its origin is unclear. If there is something wrong with this map ask him to take it away. And he will pass through all the checkpoints according to the sheriff's request. While John is negotiating with the sheriff. Quiet spits at the sheriff. The sheriff immediately gets up and Shepard slaps Quiet and John. Then the sheriff asks Shepard to look for the cartographer. Mike and Stu carry a box. Asking them to fill all these out. Not only that, but they also listen to Barbie's music. While receiving eye drops. And have to look at the eye chart. The two are almost tortured to death. Then the sheriff orders to stop the torture. And asks who the map cartographer is again. 
However, John refuses to talk. Seeing he is still don't cooperate with the sheriff, then the two are taken to an empty room. Wait for the next processing. John and Quiet are sitting here. At this moment the man beside John is taken in. Soon the screams of that man come out. John looks at the number plate and makes sure that he is not the next. Then he asks Quiet. What's her problem with the sheriff? After learning that the sheriff forced her brother to death. John is a little lonely. He used to have a family. Just never see each other again. This time he promised the raven to pick up the parcel. Just to find the feeling of family around. Quiet also sheds tears when she hears it. At this time, Stu, under the instruction of Shepard, takes them both to the place where they are executed. After the two open the door as required. John tries to move Stu by playing emotional cards. Let him spare them. Actually Stu's life here is not happy at all. He is a kind man when he and Mike were caught by butchers. He has no choice but follows the sheriff as a guard. This is not what he really want. With John's escape invitation. Stu agrees. He takes the two to the place where the keys are kept. They urgently need to find the car key to get out of here. However, Quiet sees her brother's relics at this moment. The anger wells up in her heart. She can no longer restrain her vengeance. So she finds Shepard and when he is unguarded, Quiet killed him. At the same time, she also finds that the sheriff seems to have a headquarter. Mike now discovers the plan of three people to escape. Immediately notifies others and pulls the alarm. Quiet hears the alarm and runs out quickly. Just in time for Stu and John pushing the car. She also pushes the car together. However, after the car starts successfully. Stu, who is shot, doesn't make it to get in the car. John, who just escaped successfully, doesn't forget his job. He asks Quiet where she is going. So can drop her off. Then he continues to head to Chicago. After thinking for a moment, Quiet decides to go to the so-called headquarter in the sheriff's map. 